G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for yet another video. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of a sequel to a video I did very recently, you might have seen, called the 10 worst coaching stints since the year 2000. Today we're gonna to be doing a bit more of a positive spin on that same video. We're gonna be looking at the best coaching stints in the league since the year 2000. If you haven't watched that video yet, I would appreciate it if you go check it out. If you have seen it, you may remember that I said it's important to contextualize when we're looking at you know a performance of a given coach. It's not as simple an analysis to simply just look at you know win-loss records and percentages uh, because there's a lot of mitigating factors that could be at play. Coaches can sort of inherit clubs at good and bad times, of course, but we're gonna try and look through most of the data and try and ascertain who were the best coaches since the turn of the millennium. Like I always say, go check out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com, if you want 20% off and free shipping on some elite male grooming products. You can simply head to their website and use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. As I said, you get 20% off and free shipping and there is a great selection of products there. I do believe they are coming out with the Lawnmower 4.0 in addition to all their extra little goodies as well. So go check out the website and if you do purchase something, you would be helping out the channel as well. But enough of that, let's get into the video. So first up, when talking about particularly successful coaches, it's hard to go past anyone other than Geelong's current coach, Chris Scott. He's been the Cats head coach since the year 2011 in which he famously won a flag in his first season. He's coached 253 games for a whopping winning percentage percentage of 69.57%. While they've been a consistently good and competitive team for that entire era, the shortcoming has probably been their form in finals where he's won nine games and lost 13 and of course made two grand finals, winning one in 2011 and losing one in 2020. The highlight of his career obviously being in his first season, the Cats went 19-3, and three, still didn't finish on top of the ladder and had a bit of an upset in the grand final to beat the Pies by 38 points. They've only missed the finals once in his entire time at the footy club and of course as it's sits in 2021 late in the season, Geelong is a major player, if not the team to beat for the flag this year too. Another one of the most successful coaches in the new millennium has been Adam Simpson of the West Coast Eagles, who has been coaching since 2014 to present. In that time, he's coached 177 games for a winning percentage of 64.12%. He's coached 12 finals, they've won seven, lost five. They've qualified for two grand finals and of course won one in 2018. Similar to Chris Scott, he's only missed the finals once in his entire time as West Coast Eagles coach, finishing ninth in his first season. And as it currently sits in 2021, the Eagles are seventh and still a bit of a chance to miss finals. Now there's a debate too whether the success will continue for the Eagles when their aging stars retire, but the Eagles have sort of proven an ability to regenerate the list quickly. So Simpson's record could still be preserved. The next coach we'll nominate is John Longmire of the Sydney Footy Club, who's been coaching since the 2011 season till present. In that time, he's coached 252 games for a winning percentage of nearly 62%. In that time, the Swans have made three grand finals, losing two to the Dogs and Hawthorne, and of course, winning the flag in 2012 against Hawthorne. He's got a solid finals performance of 10 wins and 10 losses, and in his entire time coaching, they've only missed the finals twice in 2019 and 2020. As it stands in 2021, the Swans are an outside chance for the flag. They currently sit in sixth spot, and with the state of their list with so many young stars, it looks like there could be a degree of success for the foreseeable future. The next coach that we'll note is Mark. Mark Bomber Thompson of the Geelong Footy Club who coached the club between the year 2000 to 2010. He coached for 242 games at a winning percentage of 62.6% and I'm sure we can all agree that Geelong club under Mark Thompson was one of the best of the modern era. Thompson was coached for two out of the three flags that Geelong won in 2007 and 2009 and of course he was coached in the 2008 loss to Hawthorne. That Geelong side that lost the grand final in 2008 went 21 and one during the regular season and would have to be considered one of the best teams to not win the flag. The Cats were also a very strong final side under Thompson, winning 11 and losing 7 in his tenure. He stood down at the end of the 2010 season, took a break from senior coaching as such for a while, and then when James Hurd was suspended, he stood up as senior coach for Essendon in 2014. The next coach we'll mention is Luke Beveridge of the Western Bulldogs, who has been at the club since the 2015 season. In that time, he's coached 152 games for a winning percentage of nearly 58%. He took over from Brendan McCartney after the Dogs were going through a little bit of a struggling period, took them to finals in his first year in 2015, and of course, in 2016, took them all the way to the Premiership. His record in finals is pretty strong with four wins and three losses, and all four of those wins were coming from the 2016 historic run when the Dogs finished seventh and won four finals to win the Premiership. Now, as it stands, the Bulldogs are currently top of the AFL ladder with four rounds to go in the season, and there's a good chance that we could see Beveridge lift the cup for the second time in his short career. The next coach we'll nominate is Richmond legend Damien Hardwick who's been coaching since 
coach of the Richmond Footy Club since 2010. In that time, he's coached 257 games for a winning percentage of 57.22%. Now, he took over Richmond at potentially their lowest ebb as a footy club, and I do remember talks at the start of the 2010 season whether Richmond were going to win a game all year. As it happened, they found form in the middle of the year, winning six games and avoiding the wooden spoon. Hardwick then took them to consecutive finals appearances between 2013 and 2015, before plumbing out of the finals race in 2016 and having plenty of people put pressure on him to lose his job. We all know what happened next. Richmond won three of the next four flags in the one year they didn't win, they were minor premiers. As it stands in 2021, Richmond are still the reigning premiers, although it does look like a 50-50 proposition at best that they're going to play finals at all. But hey, I might look silly in about two months time when they lift another flag. The next coach we'll nominate is Lee Matthews of the Brisbane Lions, who coached the footy club between 1999 and 2008. In that time, he coached 237 games for a winning percentage of 60.55%. The incredible thing about Lee Matthews is that when he took over the Lions, they're a wooden spoon side, and in his first season, he took them up the ladder to third spot. Between 2001 and 2004, he took them to four consecutive grand finals, from which they obviously won three flags in a row. That Brisbane Lions side has been reflected upon as one of the greatest teams of any era, and their finals record of 14 wins and four losses under Matthews shows how tough they were to beat. At the end of the 2008 season, Lee Matthews stood down and was replaced by club legend Michael Voss, and the Lions only made the finals once for the next decade. The next coach we'll nominate is Mick Malthouse from a similar era to Lee Matthews, who was coach of the Collingwood Footy Club between 2000 and 2011. In his time there, he coached 163 games for a winning percentage of 57.34%. Now, Malthouse had joined the Collingwood Footy Club after a very successful decade at the West Coast Eagles as senior coach, where they failed to miss finals at any point and won two premierships. He carried that relative success through to Collingwood and, of course, made the grand finals in 2002 and 2003, but failed to actually win the flag. They then had a short rebuild and were back in finals contention by 2006. In his time, Malthouse attended four grand finals for Collingwood, although five if you include the grand final replay, and they won the premiership in 2010. Malthouse had a winning percentage of 61.36% in finals at Collingwood, which really demonstrates how tough to beat Collingwood were at their best. He then handed over the coaching role at the end of 2011 to Nathan Buckley, who, as we know, couldn't quite replicate Malthouse's success. The final coach will nominate as being particularly successful since the turn of the millennium is Ross Lyon and we're going to highlight him particularly for his stint at St Kilda between 2007 to 2011 although his time at Fremantle was also worth mentioning. Lyon coached 121 games for the St Kilda Footy Club at a whopping winning percentage of 64.46%. He coached 11 finals splitting them with five wins and a draw and of course qualified for two grand finals. Ross Lyon of course never won the grand final as coach falling agonizingly close in the 2010 drawn grand final. His two 2009 St Kilda side went 20 and 2 in the regular season and along with Geelong in 2008 would be considered one of the best teams to never win the flag. Now as we all know in 2012 Ryan defected to Fremantle and of course made the grand final in just his second year at the club. Following 2015 Fremantle sort of plummeted into a bit of a forced rebuild which would hurt Lions winning percentage but it was still 52% at Fremantle and 57% across the two clubs spanning 12 years. Considering how long it seems like Fremantle were kind of average under Ross line that is an incredible winning percentage anyway guys that is it for the best coaches since the year 2000 let me know like i always say what things did i get right what things did i get wrong and what are some coaches i perhaps missed out if you haven't already i would really appreciate you subscribing to the channel trying to get to 15,000 by grand final day and i really really need your help do go check out the sponsors of today's video manscaped if you need some male grooming products at a good quality price thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video cheers